Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. Um, my name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 163, we will continue our journey of looking at these various architecture styles by looking at service-based architecture. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do at Software Architecture Monday at my website, developer2architect.com slash lessons. So this is the roadmap uh, that we've been using in our journey of architecture styles. And we now are way over here in the distributed architecture, taking a look at service-based architecture. So let's look at service-based and then when to use it and when not to use it. But service-based architecture can be best described as well-defined independent domains deployed as separate units of software. This is the shape of this architecture style. And let me show you some of the aspects and topologies of service-based architecture. Um, first of all, we have something here called a domain service. This domain service is fairly coarse-grained. Unlike microservices, a single-purpose function, this service represents all the functionality of a particular domain. Uh, maybe it's customer processing. Maybe it's order processing. Uh, maybe it's shipping and fulfillment. Uh, maybe it's tracking, reporting, analytics. Uh, these are all various domains that exist within a system. And that's how this architecture is delineated. Um, because of the coarse gray nature, you'll also notice we can actually share a database. Something unique about service-based architecture. We don't necessarily need to break apart the database, which makes, makes this a fairly attractive architecture style for those monolithic database kind of systems. Now, because we are sharing or can share a single database, typically, unlike microservices, which could have hundreds to even thousands of services, here in service-based, we generally have three to 12 services because these are coarse-grained and sharing typically a single database. Now, if we start going beyond 12 services, uh, then we're going to start to have change control problems, especially with regards to the database. And in which case, we're now starting to enter really into that microservices land where we do need that operational automation to be able to uh, handle all the testing, release, and monitoring of these services, um, but also breaking apart our data. Okay, there's a lot of flexibility that we can do with service-based architecture. Here I'm showing a single user interface deployment uh, with four domains or domain services, uh, but there's nothing that says we can't start breaking apart that user interface into separate deployment units. As a matter of fact, we can start to align those user interface uh, deployments along with that corresponding functionality in the UI with various domains. And so we can start to deploy the quote, I'm gonna put it in air quotes, uh, micro front ends, <laughs> the breaking apart of our user interface uh, layer, basically all those UIs into separate deployment units. And as a matter of fact, we could do the same thing and play around with the data as well. Nothing forces service-based into sharing a single monolithic data base. It's possible, sometimes gives us some leverage, but a lot of times we can start breaking apart that data. As a matter of fact, we can go as far as to try to break apart that data into domain-based databases. Therefore, actually starting to form these separate artifacts, separately deployed parts of our system, separate domains that reside totally independent from other domains. That becomes a good example of what's known as an architectural quantum. As you can see, there's a lot of flexibility uh, with the topology within service-based architecture. Okay. Let's get to the part where all of you are probably waiting for, and that's when to use and when not to use. Uh, the times to use service-based architecture are when we do have those needs for high time to market and high agility. Uh, notice here, and again, that's that ability to respond quickly to change. Uh, notice maintainability, testability, 
and deployability are all four stars here. Um, one less star than microservices because, well, we do have more coarse-grained services. We've got larger testing scopes and larger deployments, which means larger, de longer, de or higher deployment risk. But still, four stars is pretty good. But the differentiator here, everyone, is this right here. Notice the cost went from one star in microservices to four here. This is not an expensive architecture. We don't need organizational change to do service-based. We don't need to break apart our database to do service-based. And we don't need DevOps, operational automation, and Kubernetes to use service-based. Oh, we sometimes do, and I usually do, but it's not required. So we don't really have that formal sense of a bounded context as we do within microservices. But also, if the shape of your problem or system has well-defined independent domains that really don't communicate with one another except at the data layer, uh, this is a match that works really well with the shape of space-based architecture. Each of those domains, parts of our system, are deployed as a separate unit of software. Now, if we have high fault tolerance needs, uh, space-based architecture is good. Not quite as good as microservices, only four stars versus five. But if we lose a domain service, uh, other domains are still able to function properly. And finally, the other thing is, if we have monolithic data that is either too difficult or not feasible to break apart, this is a really good architecture style that allows us to share data. And again, the reason we can is because of the small number of services, four, well, three to 12, basically, is the number. Usually I say four to 12, but there can be times when you only have three domains or maybe even two. <laughs> but there's another good use case of when to use this. And that as, as a migration target or even greenfield target when you're moving to microservices. My advice is to move here first because you see using this architecture style or implementing this first allows you to identify those various domains and we don't have to deal with the partitioning and breaking apart of our data yet. Then we can now analyze those domains to see which ones should move to microservices. And let's say it's these two, because we do need that fine-grained nature, single-purpose functions to get those five stars teased out for that agility, scalability, elasticity, and such. But certain domains, like these ones here, don't need to be microservices. And we don't realize or see that until we move here first. So it acts as a great migration target. Well, this looks like a fantastic architecture. Oh, oh, is there times when it, we shouldn't use it? And as a matter of fact, there are some use cases when it's good, well, when we should not probably use this. If we have high elasticity needs, this is not a well-suited architecture just due to the coarse-grained nature of those domain services. Uh, the problem being that our mean time to start, MTTS, to respond to immediate high load is just too long. It's too slow. And that's more suited for things like microservices. However, there are other use cases when not to use this. First of all, if we have high semantic coupling between our domains, this is not a good architecture style to implement that in because we'll have too much communication between these coarse-grained domain services and like microservices, that ends up looking like a big ball of distributed mud. <laughs> so high semantic coupling between domains here uh, is not a good use case. But also, if we find that we start to have too many services, this is one of those other cases where uh, this doesn't match well. Uh, 3 to 12, no more than 12, is a good guideline for service-based architecture. If we start having too many services, now we have to either start breaking apart our data 
Or, if we can't or it's not feasible, we have to start combining services. As that means we just went too coarse grained and we need to start combining those domains together. Now, in some cases, you might have a type of system where there are this many domains, <laughs> and in which case, it, microservices would be better suited than service based architecture. And there you have it, folks. Uh, this hybrid of microservices called service-based. Um, as you'll notice from kind of the summary of the star ratings, uh, there are no five stars in this architecture style. It's mostly threes and fours, but there's also very few, only one, kind of just about abstraction. So this really does become a very pragmatic and balanced architecture style. So this has been Lesson 163, Service-Based Architecture. In two weeks, we'll take a look at our next architecture style in our journey, service-oriented architecture. And yes, in fact, it is an entirely different architecture style than service-based. It has entirely different characteristics, which we will see in two weeks' time.